Hello and welcome. My name is Trey Bremer. I'm with Mitel. Today I'm going to go over your new 6920 IP phone for you users who are ACD. Um, ACD is a way of logging in and logging out of your phone to receive calls. So if you're one of those people, this is the video for you. Uh, we're going to go over the phone's tools and features. Make sure you have the basic lay of the land uh, so you can get started. Uh, keep in mind there should be a full manual that's been sent and available and as well as a cheat sheet which will help you maneuver through the phone as well. Here's a few things to remember. Uh, one is if you dial 911, don't hang up. Uh, the reason why I put this on here is for some reason when we set people up on these phones, uh, someone will be dialing 911 for some reason. So uh, not a big deal usually, but if you do dial 911 and you think, wow, I beat the first ring, I'm sure I'm safe, uh, generally you are not. So you should stay on the line and tell them you accidentally dialed it. Um, I guess it's because you're dialing nine and then maybe one for long distance and then all of a sudden you're uh, accidentally dialing 911. Um, you will need to dial a nine and the area code for all outbound calls. So uh, nine, area code and phone number and away the call goes. You don't need to dial a one for toll free or long distance dialing, but if you're in the habit like I am of dialing the one, just you can still do it. It won't hurt anything, but you don't need to dial that digit. For you ACD uh, users, Make Busy will be on the phone. Now, Make Busy is sort of like Do Not Disturb for ACD agents or end users in your guys' case. Um, so you'll use that when you step away from your desk or if you uh, take a break or whatever. So uh, Make Busy, when you press it, uh, you'll hear dial tone and you just hang up. It confuses people sometimes when they hit it. They're like, what happened? I hear dial tone. Just make sure you hang up right after you hit it. But it will like time out eventually if you forget but good not to hear the dial tone and then the beeping when you've uh, left it off hook too long okay and one last thing is kind of an important thing is when you're and i'm going to walk through this so it's probably will sound confusing but i'll refer back to it your acd pin so when you log into your phone in the morning and then uh, really in the morning you will log in by using your kind of your extension number. It'll ask for it and you punch that in and then it'll ask you for your pin. Now your pin will be the same as your extension number, but that's only until you set up your voicemail box. If you have a voicemail box, if you don't have a voicemail box for some reason, then um, you will just always use your extension number as your pin. But um, if you do have a mailbox, once you log into your phone and you go in and set up your mailbox, whatever pin you use for that will also be your login pin. So you only have to remember one pin number. You know, maybe it's, uh, you know, 54321 or whatever. It could be four to 12 uh, digits. But remember that that will mimic whatever your login. And I'll go through this a little bit with you as we move along uh, through the presentation. So no worries there. Let's take a look at the phone really quick. This is what the 6920 IP phone looks like. You can see it has a nice display and there's some staggered keys. If you're facing the way I am, you're, they're over to the uh, left-hand side of the phone. Uh, those keys relate to little buttons that will be designed on the phone for you. You'll see them. And then on the bottom, you'll see that there's four uh, buttons. Those are related to this little gray strip that you sort of see there uh, that will give that's more dynamic. Uh, it changes depending on the conditions of the phone. It'll give you things like when you're on a call to uh, allow you to transfer or set up a conference or hang up. Uh, when you're not on the phone, it's going to offer you things like redial, but I'll show you as we move along. Um, there's a little circle there. That's a navigation key. We'll talk about that. And then you'll notice on any either side of the uh, keypad, there's some little um, buttons there with some uh, little icons. And we'll kind of go through each of those so you kind of understand how that's laid out. Uh, it'll start to make sense once you use the phone. Uh, you'll get used to the button layout, but most of those are tools. Uh, and there are some that are like feature driven, like uh, speaker and mute and hold and that sort of thing. So I'll make sure we look at each of those buttons uh, so you're ready for uh, your first calls. This is a navigation key up close. Um, the way the navigation key 
works is the outside ring is left, right, up and down, and the very center is select. And where this key comes into play is when you're in a different, kind of more or less different settings. I will point it out when we're uh, at a place where you're gonna use that navigation key, but you're not gonna need it for every call or anything. It's more like I go into my call history and I need to scroll around. This is how you can scroll around by using this navigation key to go up and down or left or right. So I'll show you when it comes into play. The very center of the key, a little bullseye there, is select. Uh, so if I scrolled over, let's say I go to my call history and I go over to the right uh, to select a name from my call history, I can hit the center key and then call that person back. So it's it, it like a shortcut. It, there are soft keys I'll show you on the phone that'll also allow you to hit dial rather than hit the center if you prefer, but that's just a quick way to kind of navigate and select, you know. So that's, that's what that key is. Um, hot desking ACD, um, ACD into your phone. Hot desking is what this ACD is called. Um, so what you're gonna wanna do is when you have your phone and you're not logged into it, you're gonna see it says a uh, hot desk at the bottom. It also says locked. Um, there are occasions where people who are not logged in might have a physical phone and they can log in to be an agent for a while. But in this case, uh, most of you will have a locked phone if you're not logged in. What locked means is you have the ability to dial 911 or the operator, but it won't let you receive any inbound calls, nor will it let you uh, make any outbound calls. So in this position, basically the, the phone is idle and calls will pass you by, you won't be part of the flow. The indicators that I have kind of circled there or squared there uh, will let you know that you're in this mode. Um, the one thing you'll see is a pound. I put it here on the second uh, as a second digit, but it could be the third. It depends on how it was designed, but you'll see a pound in there. And it also say hot desk and it, there'll be a clear indication on the display. It'll say locked. So that's gonna give you some indications that you need to log in. So how do you log in? Well, let's do that. First thing you're gonna do is hit hot desk, okay? Uh, the button right below it of those four buttons we talked about. When you hit that, it's gonna then change and ask for your, it's for your extension number. You're gonna punch in your extension number, whatever that is, four or five digits, I think it's four for you guys, uh, and hit enter. And then it's gonna ask you to enter your PIN. This is where you're just gonna put in that extension number one more time. Sometimes the extension number is referred to as an agent ID, but basically it's an extension number that you're logging into the phone as. Uh, but that's what you're going to use to, act, to um, put in the phone. Now, when I put in the PIN now, I'm gonna put in the same as the extension or the agent ID, but when I, if I have a voicemail and I set that up, it's also going to ask me to enter a pin I'm going to use daily to get to my voicemail, and that will make this pin the same. So when you log in the next time, uh, after the first time you get into the phone and you've set up your voicemail, you use whatever you change it, you know, four, three, two, one, whatever it is you change your voicemail pin to, you'll use this. And that secures the phone as well. It secures the phone, it secures your voicemail. And you want to put in a pin uh, for your voicemail that will keep the random person calling in out of your voicemail. You know, you don't want someone knowing one, two, three, four. Uh, those are things people try. So for security reasons, you wanna make it a pin that makes kind of sense, maybe a number in your world uh, that uh, you'll remember. If you have a hard time remembering it, you know, write it down or something because it does take a while to clear that pin out if you mess up and then that just takes you out of the, uh, uh, the ability to, uh, receive calls for, during that time. So something to keep in mind. So once you hit enter, when, when you put in the pin, uh, initially by default, it'll be the same as your extension or agent ID. Then your phone will come to life and you'll have all your buttons that are designed on there. Um, and what, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna kind of uh, show you kind of the lay of the land on this. But first I wanna show you that when you initially log in, you'll notice that it says make busy in the center. So what's nice about that is if you are uh, in for the morning and you wanna get all logged in and ready to go, but you're not ready to take calls yet, uh, once you log in, it doesn't make you available. It, it puts you in a 
make busy status, which is sort of like do not disturb status. Uh, no calls will, inbound calls will reach you. Uh, it, no inbound agent calls. So anything in that flow, you know, that comes to the department or to the group of phones that are in these agents. But someone could still dial your 4487 and dial you internally. In this case, it's 4487. It'll be different for you. Uh, and, and dial you. So this is a make busy to keep you out of the inbound call flow. So if I came in early and I just want to get set up, but I don't want to go back and log all in, I could go ahead and log into the phone. It will be ready to go. It'll come up like it is here. It'll be in a make busy status. And when I'm ready to uh, get, you know, to work, I'll just press that button that corresponds with make busy. That will take that make busy out. The, the, the thing that says make busy will go away. And now I'm ready to receive inbound calls. When I'm ready, it'll look like this. The make busy is now gone um, and I'm sitting idle. Let's kind of talk about the buttons that are here. I like to start at the top and work my way down. Um, first of all, I want that blue strip where you see the extension number, the uh, fake extension number is not one of yours. Uh, you'll also notice as you move to the right, there's some symbols. I'll just kind of let you know what some of those symbols are. Uh, you'll see multiple symbols up there. There's a couple more that I'll show you as we move along, but um, these are the basic symbols you'll see. Uh, first one is the little fellow there. Uh, he indicates that you're logged in. Uh, so this just means that you're ready to go. Logged in and good to go. Uh, logged in your phone. The little ricochet arrow with the four and the line underneath just means that you had missed a call. It's really unlikely you'll miss a call. And this is a really important thing about ACD I want to tell you about. ACD uh, is set up so if you miss a call, it'll log you out of the phone. And the reason why it does that is because if you're not answering your calls, then it assumes that you're not available to take calls and it doesn't want to waste three rings on a customer or someone calling in before it moves to the next person. So it's really important when you leave your desk that you make yourself busy or otherwise you're logging in. You saw the login process isn't that complex, but it, you know, it's a couple steps where you could just hit a button. Uh, so it'll save you time. So you wanna make sure that you make yourself busy when you go to a break, when you go to lunch, anytime during the day where you're away from your desk or you're busy doing other work that you're not going to answer that phone, make yourself busy. People can still call you internally by your extension or your agent ID number so they can get a hold of you even when you're in a make busy status, but no inbound calls will happen, okay? So really important um, to make sure that you do that make busy. Otherwise, calls will be introduced to your phone. It'll say, wow, you must have forgot to make yourself busy, and it'll log you out of the phone completely uh, so the next call that comes in won't be offered to you. So that's probably a lot different than anything that you've dealt with. I understand that this ACD is new for you guys, so keep that in mind. It takes a little getting used to, but just kind of be mindful when you step away to hit that button. All right, let's, uh, we're talking about the missed calls there. Um, the next thing I want to talk to you about is the little boxes. What that really is just indicating is that you're clean on the network. Uh, if you ever were having phone issues, which you shouldn't, it's, it's going to be pretty uh, uh, solid system. But let's just say there's some problems you'll see that uh, those boxes could turn yellow, maybe one or two of them. I'm not sure how they exactly happen, but you can like, call your IT department and say, hey, my phone's not all green, and maybe that will help them realize there's a network issue that uh, they may not have discovered yet. So that's what that's for. And then um, let's kind of work our way down underneath the extension number that's listed up top. You see it says my phone. That's really your line one. And as an agent, really all you have is a line one. You have one line in because we don't want multiple calls coming into you through that ACD group. Um, so you'll have the where it says my phone will be kind of your inbound call key. Uh, when a call comes to that key, and I'll show you this in a little bit, it's going to change from saying my phone to the caller ID information, the extension number if it's someone internal or the phone number if it's someone from the outside. Also in the center where you see redial, that'll give you caller identification name and number there as well. So you're going to have a lot of information coming your way. Uh, the, the button that says single line, what that is is your ability. What happens a lot of times when you have one line, uh, it becomes really hard 
to communicate with uh, with management or with somebody else in the office. So we put that line there. It's only for outbound. You won't get any inbound calls to that single line. But what happens is um, if you need to make a call out while you're on a call, you place the the person on hold and you need to make a call, it gives you a line to kind of grab to make an outbound call without offering you up another call uh, while you're trying to do business with the person you're on. Because the way this ACD hunt group type thing is set up is that it re recognizes that you're on a call, so it skips you and moves to the available person in the department. Um, so uh, that single line just gives you access out. And then, of course, we talked about your make busy key. That's an on and off when you hit it. Uh, remember, you're going to hear dial tone initially, and uh, you just hang up the phone, and then it'll say make busy on the front of the phone. You'll know you're good to roll. And then no inbound calls uh, to that group will come. Someone could still call you uh, on your extension number or get transferred to your extension number, but you're not going to get any of those calls that are for the group. Okay? As we kind of work our way down to the bottom, this phone is currently idle. No one's on this phone. And you'll notice that at the very bottom in the gray area, it says log out if you want to log off of your phone uh, and be done for the day. Or it offers you redial, which will allow you to redial the number that you see in the center uh, near the bottom of the display. So it says redial and gives you a phone number. And that's what you're redialing if you press that button. Also notice near the top there, you see the time and date that'll always stay up there for you uh, so you can see what time it is. Uh, you'll also notice on the main display, this little area down here, I have highlighted uh, our little box around. Um, there's two little dots. Those are just pages. And you can use the navigation key at this point to go to another page uh, of buttons. Now, you don't have a lot of buttons here. And you'll notice on this first page, you have like three buttons that are available. These are for you to program. So I can program those buttons up and make them somebody I'm working with internally a lot, a department, or I could make it an outside phone number. Maybe it's a phone number I call a lot or I transfer calls to. So it's really about you creating a button for yourself that you can use for um, you know, ease of work. You know, send, it, send the call out, or if you need home on there, you can have that so you can quickly dial home. So that's what that's for. When you uh, hit the navigation key, It'll take you to the next page, and those are a bunch of blanks. To program any of these keys, all you really have to do is sort of like your car radio, where you hold the button down, and it lets you program it. And that's what this does. You hold the button, one of those staggered buttons, over when we're facing it like this over to the left. Hold it down for about three seconds, and it'll pop up with this here where it says program key and then I can put in a phone number or an extension if I put an extension I can put the extension uh, right in or I can put in the phone number remembering the nine area code and phone number so it gives you the ability to label you would use the keys on your telephone to put in a label you know home mom whatever it is you know Joe who sits across the way um, so you can put that in then it'll allow you to go down and put in your phone number uh, so you can put in your nine area code and phone number, but if it's an extension, you just put in the extension number. And then you have the ability to mark things as private. What private means is it'll show the button, it won't show the phone number. So if I want to put my cell phone or my home phone on my desk phone, but I didn't want anyone walking up to my desk and seeing what my home phone number is, I can mark it as private. So that's what that's for. Okay. This does have other features, but there's none in there that you would uh, use. It's things like forwarding. You can't forward these phones. So there's some features for a general user who could set up a button, but on yours, it's going to be either extension numbers or outside numbers, or it has to be added uh, by the, um, the uh, system administrator, whoever's taking care of the phone system, maybe Ken or whoever's doing it. Okay. So it gives you kind of lay a line. You can see you have a back, backspace and then a save. So when you get everything in there, you hit save. It'll show the label on that button then, and you're ready to roll. This is the uh, other keys, other features, just to show you what they are. There are a bunch of stuff. You can't really use Do Not Disturb. I guess if you want to make your Do Not Disturb for internal people calling you, you could use it, but it wouldn't stop a call coming in to your group, so you won't use most of those or any of those. 
So let's take a look at what an incoming call looks like. Okay, this is this. We're going to be talking about a um, outside number, but if it was an internal one, it's going to show you the person's name and extension number. So it's going to be very similar, or ex or exactly like this, but it's going to be the internal name that's displayed. So here comes an incoming call. We haven't answered it yet. Uh, so you'll hear the ring, and you'll see the button light up and kind of flash. Uh, you can see on this example up top, the caller ID number is displayed with, on the button. So my phone has gone away where it said my phone. Now it's replaced with the caller ID number. And then in the middle of the display, it's putting in uh, the caller ID name and number. Uh, I do have the ability to answer. If I'm wearing a headset, I can hit the answer key and answer that call uh, very easily on the phone. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and answer it. So here we answered the call, and you can see up top uh, the caller ID is sticking with the uh, the line, uh, and then you'll see a timer has started. The timer is indicating how long the phone has been in the system. It's not necessarily how long you've been on the call, uh, but how long it's actually taken to get to you. So you can see the timer actually pretty high when you're uh, on the call. Caller ID is still sitting in the middle there for you. And then uh, down below, you'll notice that's all changed. It's that gray area, that dynamic area we we're talking about, now offers you uh, ways to handle this call. If I'm talking to them and I'm relaying information, when I'm done, I can use that end call button if I want. You will especially use that uh, if you're on a headset, but if you're on a handset, the handset and just talking to people, you can just hang up the phone and the call. So you don't really need that. And then you'll also see that there's a transfer and an add user. Now transfer, pretty simple. I'm going to transfer it to somebody else. So that's what that's for. I'll press the button and then, uh, add user is setting up basically a conference call. So those are the three things you can do when you're on a call without hitting any other buttons. So let's kind of look at those. The first one I want to talk about is transferring a call. So here comes the call in. I picked it up already. The timer started. I'm ready to go. And I determine I need to transfer this to somebody else. So what I'll do is I'll press the transfer key. Then I'll dial the extension and press the transfer key again to complete it. How long it takes me to hit the transfer key again will determine if I'm just sending the call to somebody and letting them answer it or if I'm announcing it to somebody. So if I hit transfer and dial the extension uh, that I want to send it to, okay, then uh, I could stay on the line. I would hear your phone ring. You pick up and I can announce it to you. Hey, Joe's on the phone for you. And then when I, if you say go ahead and send it through, I can hit transfer again. And that sends the call to you, okay? Now you'll notice that when I hit transfer and dial the extension, it offers me some other things. One thing it offers me is join calls. So if I determined, even though I intended to do a transfer, but if I determined at this point I need to stay on the call, I can hit join calls and we'd all three be joined together on the call. And then it would be a conference call basically. What's really nice about that is you can do up to eight people with yourself, so seven and yourself on a conference call. So I could add another person and then another person uh, by just using the add add uh, uh, user and then uh, join calls. Uh, it also offers you a trade calls. Now what that's for is it's a feature. Let's just say I'm transferring a call. I hit transfer, I dial your extension, and then this screen comes up. And say I wait on the phone and you come on. I say, hey, somebody with ABC company is on the phone for you. And you say, well, who is it? There's four people I deal with. I can say, hold on one second. I can hit trade calls. It'll take me back to the original caller without transfer, uh, without canceling what I've done this far, as far as the transfer is concerned. And I can say, I'm sorry, what's your name? I can hit trade back. Oh, it's Joe with ABC Company. And you can say, oh, send him through. And then I hit transfer again and it completes it. So what trade does is it allows me to toggle between you, the person I'm transferring it to, and the person who called in without canceling the transfer and starting over. But let's just say I hit transfer. I dialed your extension. I waited on the line. You picked up. I, heard, I would hear your phone ring and everything. You pick up, yes, how can I help you? And I said, hey, Joe with ABC Company is on, on the phone for you. And you said, I'm sorry, can you tell them, call me back in about 30 minutes, I'm stepping into a meeting. 
well, I don't want to trade back because that's not getting rid of you. It's not getting rid of the, the transfer. So what I would do is hit the back to held. Back to held will take me back to the caller and cancel what I had done up to that point. So if I wanted to transfer it now to somebody else, I would just repeat the process. Or I could say call back in a half an hour or whatever it is. But uh, that eliminates the transfer and starts over. And I get back to the original caller and I can start talking to them. Okay, so that's how that works. Uh, when you're doing a transfer. So just remember, call comes in, I've answered it, transfer. I dial your extension and I press the transfer key again to complete it. If I stay on the line first, then I can announce it. If I wanna just send it to you, I just hit transfer again really quick and it goes to you. All right, let's talk about making a conference call. You kind of saw how that worked a little bit. It's very similar, very similar to transferring the call. So here I am again, I, I'm on that someone has called into me and now in this case, it could be I called them, they called me, whatever it is, but whatever, I'm on a call with one other person and now I wanna add you in to the call. Now, if I hit add user, you'll notice once I hit add user and dial an outside number or an extension number, it doesn't matter which, it'll have the same screen as before because the same rules kind of apply. I could go ahead and hit add user and then dial your extension. And you might say, hey, uh, just send them to me. I don't want to uh, do a conference call. Then I could just hit transfer from here. I can change my mind. So really the transfer key on the other page is just to get you to this screen. And you can make a decision by what's going on in your conversation, if you're transferring it, if you're joining them together. So if I intended to do a transfer to begin with, I hit transfer and dial your extension. At that point, I could decide we're gonna to join together in a conference call if I wanted to, or vice versa. I could just decide at first I was gonna conference with you, but then I realize I'll just send the call to you. I can also trade, that would take me back and forth to the other users. And then back to help would cancel what I'm trying to set up the, the conference and take me back to the original caller. So all that's the same. The only difference here is I'm going to press join calls to join us together in a three-way conference call. And when I press the key, it'll look like this. It'll th say three-party conference on the display. Okay. Now, if I wanted a fourth person, you can see it says add user again. I could hit add user and then go through that process again of adding the next person on. What's nice about it, when I hit add user, I'll hear dial tone. I'll be able to dial an extension and have a private conversation with that person. Hey, I'm having a conference call. Can you jump on really quick? And the other people on that conference call will not hear that conversation until I join us together. Okay. When you're in a conference like we are here, you have the ability to also split the conference. What split means to you is it moves everybody to their own line. So let's just say I'm on a conference with you and another person and you start saying something I don't want you to say. It's proprietary for the company. I could hit split really quick. It would put you on hold on your own line and then I it would give me the ability to... Um, jump back and talk to those people again, trade, it will come up on there like it did originally. And I can go to each person, hit trade each time and go to each person as I added them and have a conversation. Hey, shut up, don't say that about the company. So it's a way to, um, it's a way to kind of control the conversation. If all else fails, you can hit that and it'll split everybody off. Uh, under their own line. The other thing you can do is leave the call. Let's just say I wanted to do a transfer to you originally, but I decided to add us all together so I can introduce you uh, to the customer. So I can set it up initially as add a user, we're all together, but now I'm done introducing, I can hit leave call and that will keep those two people connected. So leave call is the official way we can keep everyone connected. If you just hang up, uh, they're not gonna be connected anymore. So you're hanging up on the whole thing. So you want to hit leave call to get out of the call. Okay. So hopefully that's clear. One thing really interesting about this is transfer and conference work the same if you're on an internal call or an outside call. So when you have your phone, if you just want to practice really quick and make sure you have it, you could go ahead and have someone call you and transfer it and conference in a couple of people just to get the lay of the land a little bit. But um, it'll work. So you're not going to you're not going to lose anybody if you just uh, carefully go through it, okay? Let's talk about the buttons on either side of the keypad. 
Um, we're going to start over on the left hand side and work our way down and then we'll go from the top down on the right hand side. There is a separation here uh, that will sort of make sense. The ones on the left hand side are more to do with features. Things like call history and your contacts list and settings and that sort of thing. We'll go through them, but less to do with actually handling calls. And then on the right hand side, it's it's more call handling features um, because we saw up top on those soft keys, you had conference and you had transfer. But things missing are things like mute, uh, hold. Uh, and a hang up key and a speaker key. So those those are buttons that are on there that have more to do with the actual physical call. So uh, it's a good separation. And as you kind of get used to the phone, you'll see that it works very well. Uh, let's go ahead and go through these buttons. First one is your contacts key. It's a little fella there. It's just telling, um, it's just providing you personal. These are ones that you add into it. So let's just say you have uh, a few buttons, but you have some contacts that you don't necessarily want to use a button on, but you want to keep their information uh, so like a little directory. You can add them in manually by hitting the add new button at the bottom in the gray area. And it'll let you put in a name and a phone number and, um, and a uh, a mobile number so you can put in multiple numbers it, it'll let you personalize it uh, on personal calls that's one way to add them the other way you can add them is in the call history which is the next key i'll show you you can add them to your personal number so if someone has called you and you're like oh i better save that name and number i can hit that and then edit and put in the right name maybe it shows a company name but i could modify the name and everything Okay, so those are ones that'll sit there and you'll be able to see them alphabetically uh, laid out. And you would use your navigation key to scroll over. And then when they're highlighted, you can hit the center of the key to dial it or it'll offer you dial on the gray area. The other one is your corporate contacts. Now this will be a little different. When you look at your corporate contacts list initially, you'll see nothing. And you're gonna wonder, where are all those corporate contracts? Well, you have to at least put in one of one letter of the person's last name. So using the keys on the telephone, you'll hit search and then you will type in at least a letter. That'll bring in all the all the people who uh, match that letter and then you can use your navigation key to scroll over and then scroll down to find the right person. And you can hit the center again to dial or it'll offer you dial if you'd like. The main thing to keep in mind with this is the more letters you put in of the person's last name, the closer you're gonna get. So if there's 100 Smiths in your office, you're gonna to wanna to put in uh, Smith and then work on the first name maybe, um, or 100 people with S's or whatever, whatever the case is. But the more you put in, the closer you'll get. Uh, and then you can call those people and that's all internal. So anyone who has a physical phone will have a, a physical phone or a soft phone will have an extension number in the directory. So any user of the system. Okay, and you can see it says reset. That's for the search and backspace if you mess up and you can close it or hit search. All right, so pretty easy on that. And then if you keep going to the right on your personal contacts, you'll be able to see this is what it looks like where you can put in the work extension or name and number and you can modify it. So I can edit this on my personal contacts. It's kind of at the end, but you, you get the idea. So that's if I continue to press the uh, arrow to the right. So if I go over to your name and then keep going, I'll be able to modify uh, your numbers or add a number, or subtract a number, whatever it is. Here's the call history button. It breaks it out for you. It can show you all the call history and, it, and it's by time. You know, the last one in is the top one and then it pushes the old ones out from the bottom. Uh, all missed, outgoing or received. So you can just see what you missed or you've dialed to make it easier to find people. Now remember that if I, if I move over with my arrow key, it'll change the display down below to allow me to add the contact. That'll add it to my personal contacts list in my call history. So if it's somebody I really wanna keep their number, this is where I can do it. And then I can modify that if I wanna change the name or whatever I need to change. Um, you can also dial it from here or you can dial it by hitting the center of the uh, navigation key. I had to select it. You can also delete contacts if you wanted to. I don't know why you'd want to do that or close out of that to get out of that screen. Here's your voicemail key. 
This will allow you to access your voicemail if you have voicemail. Uh, I'm not sure. Not, generally, a lot of call center people do not have voicemail boxes because no one can really get to them because you're ringing your phone. And if you don't answer, it rings someone else's phone. But you guys uh, do can deal with people being transferred to you or uh, if someone calls you internally, it could go to your voicemail. So if you have a voicemail box, this is how you'll access it. And it, just a quick reminder of what I talked about earlier. When you press this button for the first time, it's going to take you through a tutorial, which will allow you to put in your name, your new, uh, your greeting, and your new PIN number or passcode. Remember, that passcode is going to be the same one you'll use as your PIN number to log in and log out of the phone, or log into the phone. You don't have, you don't need it to log out, but to log into the phone in the morning. So keep that number in your head. You know, make it a number you'll remember, and don't set it up just really quick to get it out of the way because that's how a lot of people forget their numbers, and now I'm can't get into my phone. So take a, give yourself a minute or so. Um, especially if you're an ACD member, you're not really going to get calls to your voicemail right away necessarily. So the main thing on that is to make sure that um, you have a minute or so to go through the tutorial completely. It doesn't let you skip it when you go to set up your voicemail and uh, just follow the steps. It's just going to walk you right through. On a daily basis, once it's set up, you're just going to press the key. It's going to ask for that PIN number, the new one you've set up, and you'll punch it in. And it's going to uh, t t tell you how many voicemails you have, how many you don't. There is a sheet on it that I'll make a, that I made available so you can uh, kind of maneuver through the voicemail. But there's not a lot of mystery there. It's going to take you right uh, to the voicemail and offer the services that are available. You know, save messages, new messages, personal options are things that you can go rechange your passcode, rechange your greeting, rechange your name in the company directory. Okay. Here's your settings key. This is all the things you kind of hidden settings. There's a couple I'm gonna point out to you. Uh, as an agent, you're not going to use all the settings. Uh, I'm gonna skip around a few because you can't forward an ACD phone to somewhere. You have to be at the phone. So that a feature, even if you try to set it up, it's not gonna work. It won't forward the phone. It'll be denied. So I want you can skip that one, but let's look at some of the other features. Call forward, we're gonna skip but you have audio and display. And what that means to you is a couple little different things. First, I'm gonna skip the call uh, forwarding. I'm gonna go right to audio. Audio is the um, ringer basically on your phone, but it also, if you, if you use your navigation key and scroll over to audio, it'll kind of highlight it better than I'm showing you here, but it'll make it bigger. You'll see as you scroll to it. Um, instead of hitting select, if you hit the down arrow key on your navigation key, you can it'll it'll say audio path. And when it says audio path, you'll be able to go to the audio path and then um, change it from speaker to headset if you want. And if you're wearing a headset, that's really handy. That way, when you hit the speaker key, it'll go right to your headset rather than you having to hit the speaker key twice to go to your headset. So that's the difference it, it provides you. Okay. Um, but otherwise, if you select, it's going to take you to internal and external ringing, and you can choose the ringer you like. By default, it's one of those little sing-songy uh, rings. So if you don't like that and you want more traditional, uh, all you have to do is go internal and then scroll over to the use your navigation key and go to the right, and then it'll start playing whatever you're on. And as you go down, it'll play the different ones. When you have the one you want, you can just hit the center of the key to save it and, or hit save, and it'll save that. And then you go back in and go to the external, and that's anyone calling from the outside ringing, and you can make it a different ring. So that way, if you're away from your desk, you can tell if it's internal or outside. Um, Obviously, you should be in Do Not Disturb, so that's not going to matter too much. Or not Do Not Disturb, but uh, Make Busy, so it doesn't matter too much. But uh, still, if you like a different ring for both, uh, that's kind of nice. <clears throat> okay. And then Display. I only show you this because it's a personal annoyance of mine. When the, call, when the phone comes by default, um, it comes with a screensaver that comes on after like five minutes. And you can change that timer if you don't want the screensaver. What it requires you to do is if you don't touch your phone for five minutes, it'll go into like a dimming. It'll dim the display. And then you got to kind of wake it up before you can kind of see what's going on. Or if a call comes in, it'll wake it up. So it may be just me because I don't use my phone all the time. Um, but 
when you select that, it, uh, this is what the, the screensaver looks like, but it dims really dark uh, for some reason. So these are the settings for that. Um, you'll see that uh, it, brightness just has to do with how bright the display is in general. Okay, and then the screensaver timer is how long before it goes from your bright screen to that dim time bouncing around the time on your display. So you can change that all the way. I believe it's all the way up to 59 minutes at this point. I, I think someone told me it might be 120. You could try 120. If that doesn't work, put in 55 if you want it to extend. The idea of it's really good. It kind of saves power because it dims the display. But if it's 55 minutes after you leave for the day, it may not be a big deal. But um, if it's, uh, you know, every five minutes that you're not touching the phone at dims, then you have to kind of wake the phone up by hitting a button, kind of takes away from the fun. So that's up to you. Um, you can also, if you don't mind the the uh, the screensaver, you could change it so it, it lightens how dim it is. At, by default, it's one, so it's very dark, but you could scroll over to that and use these arrow keys that you see in the gray area to go up and down on the level if you want. Um, so personal annoyance to me, it might not bother you, but that's how you can change that, okay? Here's your volume control. Each piece of volume on the phone is separate. So if I pick up the handset, I'm adjusting the handset. If I wear a headset and I turn on my headset, I can adjust my headset volume. Um, if I want to adjust the ringer volume, when a call rings in, adjust it up or down, and then pick up the handset, it'll save that ring for you, or that ring volume for you. So that's how you adjust that. Now let's look at the other side. Now, like I was saying, where you saw that that was mostly tools, you know, setting, call history, contacts, your voicemail key, that's handy, but not things to do when you're, when you're actually on a call. So these are more call related, okay? So the first one is hang up. So if you're wearing a headset, um, that's convenient. They put it all the way at the top so you don't accidentally hang up on somebody. Um, you'll see the little speakers at the bottom. So that's your headset or handset or speaker button down there. So it's pretty far away from it. You don't need to hit that key if you have your handset in your hand. You just hang up the phone and it completes it. It's not a release key. It's really just a hang up key. So you can hit that to release it or hang up the call. Uh, the little uh, arrow, circled arrow there is redial list. What that means is it instead of taking the last call that you redialed, it takes you to your call history uh, outbound list, and that way you can pick the second or third call. Up top, it always has the last call that you dialed, but this would take you to your second and third. It looks like this. So you go just right to the outgoing, and then you can use your navigation key to scroll over and hit the second or third person that you dialed out last. Okay. Here's your hold key. Uh, it looks like a little pause key you would see on a VCR. You hit that. Uh, VCR is old, but our DVD player, I guess. Um, when you hit that, it'll uh, put the call you're on on hold, and the display will look like this. It'll show that call uh, kind of blinking. I can't show you the dynamics of how it looks, but it'll go between that light yellow and orange blinking back and forth to let you know it's on hold, and then you just hit the corresponding button to take it off hold. Uh, so to recover the call. So that's your hold key. And then your mute key, uh, it'll mute the hen, uh, handset or the speaker, and it'll light up when it's muted. So if you need to sneeze, cough, say uh, horrible things about somebody, make sure it's muted, and then you're good to roll. And then hit the button again to turn it off. So it's a toggle. <clears throat> the bottom key is your speaker or headset key. Um, this isn't a great representation of that button because now the latest phones that came out, which I don't have a picture of, have a, a speaker and it has a little slash and then it has a little picture of a headset in there. So it gives you a better indicator. But if you're wearing a headset and you have changed that um, audio path setting that I told you about earlier under settings, and, and um, then you'll just press that button once and it'll be on your headset. If you're not wearing a headset, then it's, you don't have to worry about it, and you'll just pick up the handset to answer and hang up with the he handset. But in this case, if you're wearing your headset, you can hang up by hitting the red key at the very top, which is hang up, or you saw it earlier on that soft key above the display where it says, you know, hang up. So you have different ways to kind of slice it, okay? Um, so there's that, okay? 
Um, I thank you very much for attending. I do want to say for you people who are uh, using the voicemail, uh, don't fear. There's a sheet that's going to walk you through not only the accessing your voicemail on a daily basis, but it'll tell you all the little cheats in the voicemail and kind of the basic flow. So it's a little flow sheet for the voicemail. Remember, by default, your voicemail passcode is the same as your extension. And when you change that um, passcode, that'll also change your login, your hot desk ACD login passcode. Um, so that's one thing I want you to take away from there. Uh, good luck with your phones. I thank you very much for attending.